Welcome to FullyInvolvedFire.com YouTube Training Previews. In this preview, we will review the FullyInvolvedFire.com Line of Duty Death 360 Degree Review, or LODD 360. All of our LODD 360 programs on our website begin by providing the details of the event. This includes incident photos and the official NIOSH investigation report. We also provide related articles, links, and drills. Each LODD 360 includes a module that allows you to view the incident scene before, during, and after the event. We also provide diagrams that include relevant information. In addition to all of this, we provide a complete recreation of the incident leading up to the fatality. This recreation utilizes computer graphics and animations to put you at the scene. Go beyond reading NIOSH reports. Watch the events unfold. Learn how it happened. Learn why it happened. And learn how to prevent it from happening again. Now let's take a look at a preview of our latest LODD 360 program available exclusively at FullyInvolvedFire.com. In this segment of our program, we're going to recreate the incident using this building, the structure you've just learned about. We're going to take you from the point of initial dispatch all the way up until the moment that the fatal event occurred. On July 22, 2008, a 24-year-old male firefighter responding from a volunteer mutual aid department was fatally injured during the floor collapse in a residential basement fire. On that date, at 1945 hours, dispatch reported a residential structure fire in the basement with smoke showing. One minute later, two additional departments, referred to in this program as Mutual Aid 1 and 2, were dispatched to assist in first alarm staffing. At 1948 hours, the responding district fire department squad 283 and engine 285 arrived on scene. Upon arrival, the crews saw smoke seeping from basement windows and eaves and drifting to the southeast. Engine 285 connected to the hydrant across the street on the D side of the fire structure. Squad 283's crew helped pull a one and three quarter inch hose line and then they set up a rehab area. The engine 285 attack crew pulled the inch and three quarter hose line across the A side and around the B side near the BC corner of the structure to an entry door with stairs to the basement and stairs to the right to the first floor. The homeowner informed the fire department that everyone was out of the residence and he believed the fire was in the furnace room of the basement. A two-man attack crew made entry into the basement without a thermal imaging camera. They went about five feet to the bottom of the stairs and turned right towards the furnace room. The crew encountered heavy brown-gray smoke banked down to the floor and reported that they felt some heat. The crew sprayed water but never saw any fire and felt debris falling on them, so they backed out of the structure. At 19.52 hours, the responding fire department's second assistant chief, acting as the incident commander, arrived on scene and saw moderate brown smoke coming from the B and C side basement. He requested mutual aid from two neighboring departments. The incident commander, or IC, then requested ventilation. A crew on scene ventilated the C side basement window and placed a negative pressure ventilation fan at the basement window. At approximately 1955 hours, the responding department's fire chief arrived on scene and assumed command. 
At that point, the second assistant chief was assigned as the B-side officer. At 19.57 hours, engine 246, the crew that the victim in this incident was assigned to, and squad 245, both from mutual aid department number one, arrived on scene. A second attack team consisting of three firefighters, two from mutual aid department number two, and one from the responding district's fire department, with a thermal imaging camera, entered the basement and had no visibility and moderate heat. This crew also backed out of the basement. The incident commander assigned an accountability officer on the Bravo side, just as a four-man crew from mutual aid number one, including the victim, made entry on the first floor through the Bravo side French doors. This crew would open all available windows. They were instructed to lift the bottom window sashes to minimize property damage in the moderate light gray smoke conditions. A third attack crew from engine 246 had pulled an inch and three quarter hose line and went to the Bravo side entry door near the BC corner. They made entry to the basement. This four man attack crew encountered heavy dark smoke down to the floor with heat up at higher levels. After checking the bathroom just at the base of the stairs in the basement, they made their way to the furnace room. Meanwhile, the interior ventilation crew on the first floor began heading for the French doors on the Bravo side of the fire structure with the victim in the back of the crew. The responding district fire department firefighter with the thermal imager had gone to the French doors and looked to the left and saw what looked to be flames licking at the base of the stairs. The firefighter yelled to the nearby Bravo side officer that the crew in the basement needed to be pulled out and that the fire attack should be on the Bravo side deck of the structure. 